Hello everybody, Jigolo here. How's everyone been? I've been great. Somehow, I have time for everything. You could say I'm managing my time like a king, or at least a lord. Anyway, you're not here for my cringe-inducing puns, and if you are, I love you. But for me to talk about the Time Lord engine. Time Lords, or Time Machine Gods, Jikaishin if you want to be a weeaboo, are a set of high-level fairy monsters based on the Tree of Life and various Archangels. The first card of the archetype was released as part of the gold series Haunted Mine in June of 2012, with the first proper wave of support being released in Battle of Legends Light's Revenge on June 7th, 2017. Surprisingly, the set also introduced the key part of the engine we will be talking about today. I think this is going to come off as a bit of a surprise, I know it was for me, but the engine had some decent competitive representation in the TCG, even being in a few decks from NYCS's top 8 in 2017. Nowadays it sees most play at a regional level and due to the lockdown, the most recent data is from September 2019. When you stop and look at this engine, it's no surprise it had such success. The engine is very flexible in what it does. I'm now going to show you a few time loads that are, in my opinion, the best picks for it. Those can be switched around, of course, depending on their purpose. This fella, at a cost of a battle phase, clears the opponent's back row. The best part about it is non targeting, non destruction, shuffle removal. To this day, I have no idea what emotion this guy has. I know though that once he hits the field, the opponent has to prevent the attack from happening. Otherwise, all the monsters will bounce back to the hand and he or she will take 300 points of damage. You really don't want to be on the receiving end of Matayon's attack. This card makes the engine going. It can special summon itself for free, search out a big boy and even summon him from the deck. The Time Lord engine doesn't function without it. As per usual, the build of the engine is rather straightforward. It's Maiden and one of the Time Lords. The ratios vary though. In some of the decks I mentioned previously, the ratio of Maiden to Time Lord was either 1 to 2, 2 to 3, or free to free. I would say the minimum of what can be useful is the 1 to 2 ratio, with the most optimal being the free to free one. It all depends on what deck it's going to be used in anyway. The engine's most noteworthy feature are the various ways of removal it provides. There aren't many card combinations that can break a board with such ease. The additional burn damage some time lords provide is also a bonus. It puts the opponent on the clock and not to mention it can provide a win with the end of match procedure. All time lords being indestructible and preventing any battle damage gives decent stall option for turn. This also isn't something I usually discuss in this series, but the cost of the cards for the engine is rather small, with Maiden costing around 2 to 3 dollars and the cost of the Time Lords varying from 75 cents to 2 dollars, this is a very solid budget option. The greatest downside of the engine is its similarity to evenly matched, meaning it uses up the player's battle phase. Not only that, but should Maiden be used to summon the Time Lord, no monsters can be special summoned for the remainder of the turn, preventing the user from establishing a board of their own. That would be it for today. I dedicate this episode to my New Zealand pal, the casual Kiwi. He is and probably will be the Time Lord God. Go check out his channel, link is in the description. He makes great content. Anyway, back to the outro. What is your favorite Time Lord? What other engines I should cover? Should I actually drop this series and do something much more productive with my life? Leave your answers to those questions in the comments below. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. See you later. Ta-ta!